Flying! Join! Flying! Flying! Flying is the number of the day! Welcome to the Fan to Fan 5-Minute Fridays where we talk about a topic, a movie, a TV show, anything that we're interested, passionate about for give or take 5 minutes. My name is Bernie Gonzalez, and on this short episode, I talk to fellow fan Andre Walker, and we talk about the 1998 Blade movie, and specifically its DVD release, and how monumental, how much of a milestone the DVD for Blade release was in the history of physical media. Here we go. His name strikes fear in his enemies. It's open season on all Night Stalkers. Half human. All our strengths. Half immortal. None of our weaknesses. He is the ultimate weapon in the war against evil. Tonight, the age of man comes to an end. I don't see it that way. Wesley Snipes. Steven Dorff. Blade. It's only a 90s movie. I mean, everybody yes. always talks about the 90s, how it was like loud and fast paced and sort of over the top type of thing. And Blade was totally a 90s style movie. Steven Norton really brought that out in that, in that opening intro scene. That's totally a 90s vibe. You see that movie, you know this movie probably came out in the 90s. And you always remember the music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, this classic. <laughs> bloodbath, bloodbath. Mm. And I remember, so at the time, I was working at Best Buy mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. And the movie came out on DVD. Mm-hmm. You work at Best Buy, that means you end up eventually at some point buying some decent speakers mm-hmm. for your surround system. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the first movies where I popped in the DVD and you could hear his uh, blade boomerang. Yeah. As he throws it around and it goes from front speaker to back left speaker to back right speaker back to the front and to the center. It was just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. It was definitely one of those things that uh, when DVD first popped out that it was a big must get movie for a lot of DVD fans out there who wanted to because DVD had just started around that time I yes. believe and yes. it wasn't really that big you know and uh, there was very small selection and Blade was one of those movies that if you had to get a DVD Blade was one of the DVDs you want to have in your collection because it was a pretty solid movie especially if you want to show off your South surround sound yes. when surround sound really started to blow up in the 90s especially when I was working at Best Buy the uh, THX the, the THX Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital yes. Dolby Pro Logic oh, 5.1 yes. all that uh-huh. you wanted to get the Blade movie in there because it had that and it had that one other scene where Blade blows up he goes and interviews the one large Jabba the Hutt vampire and there was a scene where he puts jail around the door and he blows up the door. I'm not exactly right, but I think somebody who I worked with at Best Buy who knows about this said that that, si- that scene, the explosion at that time was one of like the highest recorded sounds for uh, digital sound at the time. Because when you put that on your surround sound, it was almost piercing. Mm. I mean, I really, I literally had to, even no matter where I had the to. The sun is working a little extra. I had to turn it down. Even if I had it low, I would turn it a little bit lower. Yeah. Because that scene was just explosive. Best sound test you could have for and it, and it became a sound test where most people used in uh, when they tested the in surround sounds and uh, surround sounds around this, around the country. That scene was the scene that they used to show people how the speakers work. So that's that's one thing to blade. Dubiously, if you want to say it, mm-hmm. was a sure. that's a demo for a surround sound in the nineties. Uh, so it was one of the first DVDs that had a lot of special features. Yes, it did. Interviews, martial arts, montage, uh, biographies, behind the scenes footage. It had a documentary on the design of Blade. It had the trailer. The kind of stuff that we kind of take for granted now, especially when you talk about a special release Blu-ray, because now we're in the era of Blu-rays, mm-hmm. right? So the Blu-ray comes out. One disc may have the movie. The second disc may have all the features. But at that time, we're talking, you know, 1999, 2000, uh, one of the executives one of the quotes I found where he talked about how the DVD sales actually superseded the box office. Yeah. So that means it made over 131 million in DVD sales, which is unprecedented. They kind of pioneered the idea of expecting uh, special features in a movie because you never really had that before. And like, like I said, DVD had not taken off that. There was a format that people were still kind of shaky with. It wasn't a lot of content out there. And then Blade comes along and like we talked about, it, we said a lot of first. Blade was like one of the first with the extra content. One of the cool things on there that we see on there now is alternate endings. Yes. Big feature on the Blade, if you haven't seen it, the ending scene, the original ending where Blade, you know, Blade comes out of the out of the tunnels and fighting Deacon Frost and Lamagra, and they see Morbius, you know, another popular vampire character. Or, or it, it looked like Morbius, but it was another Daywalker. And the rumor was that it was supposed to be Morbius, another Daywalker that Blade was supposed to fight. And I thought just seeing that was cool. I mean, we didn't nobody ever seen alternate endings. You whatever movie you see, that's the movie that you see. Yes. You know, even, even when you bought the VHS 
VHS tape back in the day. They didn't put that on VHS tapes. It wasn't enough. You watched the movie and maybe a couple of trailers for future movies coming out. But when Blade came out, they have all the extra features behind the scenes and the history of La Magra and some of the stories and see the alternate ending that was originally planned for Blade. It really, 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 really helped DVD sales. Because, and like you said, it really made other DVD people say, listen, they put that on this DVD. We have to put some of that stuff on here. We're now part of a culture that likes to see how the hot dog is made. Mm-hmm. And we want to see behind the scenes features. We want to see interviews with the actors, Mm -hmm. with the creative staff, like the directors and everything else. You like a movie so much, you want to find out how did they come up with that ending and then hear from the actual actors, from the director, from the writer. Mm -hmm. Because David Goyer has gone to do so much Mm -hmm. after this. I mean, if Stephen Norrington has kind of bowed out and decided to go ahead and go into exile, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, whether it's self-appointed or he's been blacklisted or whatever. Exactly. But David Goyer, I mean, he's done quite a few different things. Nolan Batman movies. Exactly. He directed uh, a few movies on his own. I want to say it was Unborn. He did uh, The Invisible, Mm -hmm. which was actually a decent movie. But yeah, I mean, I think he directed Blade and Blade Trinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After following Guillermo del Toro. Mm -hmm. on Blade 2. So the DVD precedent that Blade said. We take it for granted now, but Blade was the pioneer in that feature too with extra DVD sales, extra extra content. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. 